grace which was given to me, James, Cephas, not Peter, and John, gave these esteemed pillars, earlier he said not that their importance means anything to him, gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcision. The only thing that we should do is remember the poor. So the normal apostles were only going to go to the circumcised the Jews. And they were, the others, that was the only caveat that, that they should stay away from the uh, Jews, right? Take their message to the non-Jews only. Would you not agree that's more or less what's said there? Well, you can study it on your own tongue. Well, he right away goes to the synagogues where the Jews are. Maybe there's others there too and starts talking in the synagogues. And of course he upsets all of the Jews. The apostles are aware he's going to do that if he starts talking about the things he talks about. But nothing loath that's what he does. So all I can say is that he's not a good trooper. I mean, I have to be honest with you, he may be a big success, and as you said, if this was Jesus' message, then this is okay. But uh, no, to my mind, he's not a man of honor, otherwise he would keep the, keep the uh, agreement. But what's the problem with keeping the agreement? And as any traveling salesman will tell you, you've got to go to where the customers are. <laughs> well, when you go to where the customers are, sometimes you cut in on other people's turf and terrain and you cause enemies, and, and, and you will. And, you know, Paul's got his message, they've got their message. But I can tell you this, there's not one episode here that Paul doesn't go straight to the synagogues to try to, you know, get involved with the people. And he just doesn't speak to non-circumcised people, he speaks to both. And the primarily people in the synagogue are going to be circumcised people anyway. So he's just not keeping the message. Uh, the deal that he himself said he struck. So, you know, honestly, if you're fair-minded, you would have to acknowledge that even you think he's justified that he's not keeping the, the bargain that he said he struck, if that's an accurate picture. Now, suppose I was Jesus and came to judge this. Would I, would I, would I, would I be happy about Paul's work? No, I don't think Jesus wants things done in an illegitimate way. He's too high for that. I, that's my Jesus. You can choose. Kind of, now, if your Jesus is uh, is like, um, who's the Raider coach? Uh, Al Davis, who had the philosophy of win, baby, just win. <laughs> you know, that's his philosophy. If, if, if you win at any cost, and that seems to have been the way a lot of people went about this business, including Constantine Eusebius, and all the people who went to Spanish America and to the eastern parts of Europe and places win at any cost, including killing off all the poor Indians and everything in the process, or enslaving them to the missions up here. That's the Pauline ethos, and I think that's uh, not the ethos that good Christians want in their in their in their Christianity as a righteous thing. So I don't think it's it's improper to point this out. Anyway, you have to decide that. You we all agree. If Acts is historical, and I'm not sure it always is, maybe Acts isn't accurate, he goes right to the synagogues, and as well he might, because that's where the business is. The Jews have already laid the foundation of the groundwork before him, because there's a lot of people interested in Judaism. All Paul is doing was getting in there with a Hellenized message that can make it easier on the people who are being interested in the synagogues that they don't have to come into the law and circumcise themselves because that would be a difficult process for them. So Paul's giving them a, a, a version of things that they can plug into that relates to the Greek mystery religions. I mean, sure he's going to win the day. Sure he's going to win the day, particularly if he's got Roman troops to back him up that's going to crush the Jerusalem center in around 10 years and demolish it. And, not, and, and wipe the Jerusalem church out so the whole leadership is gone. Well, Paul has got a free field. Totally free field. And his form of Christianity is obviously going to win. And it does. But I'm not sure that's Jesus' form of Christianity. That's you to have to say. Anyway, that's where we go. To the synagogues. And to my mind, that's not what I would do. I would not go into other people's turf. If my... Uh, message was so powerful, I would go out on the streets, then I would go into the temples of the pagans, 
and I would go to other places and proclaim my message. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take advantage of other people's work before me. To me, to my mind, and not to the people who think that that's fine, to my mind that's cheesy. It's not honorable. You decide. But Paul doesn't care about that. He says, what does he say in Corinthians? I believe in winning. That's how I fight, not beating there. We read you that. I'll read it again, just in case you forgot. He is, again, that philosophy that I consider to be Al Davis and uh, Vince Lombardi and the, the modern man. What then is my reward? 9, 18, 1 Corinthians. In preaching the gospel, I should make the gospel of Christ free. So I not misuse my authority for being free from all. See, I'm free. I'm under the law. I'm a free man. I'm a Roman citizen. I myself became a slave to all, ingratiating himself to you, but not slave to the law, you see, so that I might gain the most, but I do it as a kind of strategy, a business strategy. I'm playing a game of salesmanship here. So I become under the law, okay, so I can gain those under the law, and to those outside the law, I am as outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain those outside the law. For anyone weak, I become weak, so I might gain the weak. So all those have become all things, so I am by all means <laughs> might save some. And do this for the sake of the gospel, uh, etc., etc. Do you know the ones who run another race, now use the stadium athletics to describe his method, which would have been horrifying in Palestine? Greek stadium, Olympic athletics, where they all ran naked in all of their bodies. Only one receives the prize. So... Run that way to win, he says. There he puts it. Run to win. It doesn't matter the way. The end justifies the means here. Run to win. Now, I know it's, I'm giving a very jaundiced view of this, but if you can present this in any a more, uh, uh, this is what he's saying, maybe you think it's right, but in any case, some people would think it's not their style wasn't James's style, therefore he lost. But everyone who tries to win in all things controls himself. You gotta keep your body under control. That's how I do it, so that you can win an eternal crowd that lasts forever. So you shouldn't be running uncertainly nor beating the air like a boxer just beating nothing, man. You should be out there fighting the way you should fight. I keep my body under discipline and bring it into, into good training, lest uh, I should be rejected myself having preached as well. Anyway, he's a Greek to the Greek, a Jew to the Jew, a lawkeeper to the lawkeeper, a lawbreaker to the lawbreaker. Anything he has to do to win, he believes in winning. And he does win. And 